we begin with a pictorial depiction of an activity we managed to do in class before we went home, which was to light a flashlight bulb using just a battery and a single wire. Before they do this activity, a lot of students don't believe that this is even possible. They think they need two wires or something like that. But as you've seen, it is quite possible to achieve this. And there are four different configurations of the battery and wire and light bulb that will suffice to light the bulb. All that you have to do, recall, is to have one terminal of the light bulb connected electrically to one terminal of the battery, and the other terminal of the light bulb connected to the other terminal of the battery. One of them can do direct physical contact, and the other one you need the wire for. This was our introduction to the idea of electric current, which is the motion of electric charges. We know what electric charges are, and we know that electric charges have forces between them. Opposite charges attract each other, like charges repel each other. There are two flavors of charge, positive and negative, and they do actually seem to behave like positive and negative numbers. This is the first time we've actually dealt with real negative numbers in physics. So what we're looking at with this particular lesson is specifically something called Ohm's law, which is the relationship between current, voltage, and resistance. Voltage we've looked at before, current we've just touched on, and resistance we're about to learn. We'll also be able to understand the power dissipated by a resistor when current flows through it. This is an analogy to a circuit of water. So we've got a pump which provides energy to increase the potential energy of water, which flows through a valve which can shut the system on or off, goes through a constriction in the nozzle where the water is slowed down, some resistance to flow, and then it returns completing the circuit this system is only going to work if there is a circuit, if the water can be used over and over again. And that's an exact analogy to this situation. The battery provides energy to the charges that are going through the wire. In this case, they're electrons. The current flows this direction from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. It goes through a switch, which can shut off the flow of charge by opening up. It goes through the light bulb, which is where energy of the charges is dissipated and heats up the filament so it gives off light. And then the charges return back to the battery. Rather than draw pictures every time, we like to use circuit diagrams to communicate the essential features of the components of the circuit without getting bogged down in the particular details. We'll often draw a voltage source, something like this, with two plates. Usually the large plate is the positive one a switch you see very schematically, and then a resistor, which is shown as a jagged conductor, indicating that the charges have to go through a longer distance where they meet resistance. A light bulb, as we understand, has two different contacts on the different ends of its filament. One contact is connected to the metal sheath of the light bulb, and another is connected to the metal contact at the bottom, which is separated from the sheath by an insulator. So electric current is the flow of charge. It's defined as the charge flux per time. By charge flux, I mean how much charge goes past a point or through a cross section of the wire, the conductor that the current is flowing through. And so it's the amount of charge per time. So in this case, we have a current flowing to the right. The unit of current is what it needs to be. It's charge per time, so coulomb per second. That's an important enough unit that it has its own name, the ampere. Symbol for ampere is the capital A. In this particular simulation, we see charges moving in different directions, positive charges moving to the left, negative charges moving to the right. The direction of the current is to the left positive charge moving to the left, that's the way that the, char that the charge is flowing. The negative charge moving to the right is essentially the same thing as building up positive charge density on the left. So either one of those, charges, positive charges moving to the left or negative charges moving to the right, make a current to the left. The conductor is a material through which current flows. Insulator, current does not flow. We've seen this definition before. What we haven't seen before is that we have varying types of conductors or insulators, that it turns out there is no such thing as a perfect conductor or a perfect insulator. It's just a matter of degree. 
Charges flow readily through conductors. Charges flow less readily through insulators. And it turns out that there are perfect conductors, known as superconductors, which have many applications in technology, but they're not something that we can often see in our daily lives. To quantify how poor a conductor something is, we have a quantity known as the resistance. There is always some hindrance to current flowing through a conductor or through any material. We refer to that hindrance as the resistance. So it's kind of like friction or drag if you're trying to push a box or something across a surface. Uh, different surfaces will have different amounts of resistance. We have the same kind of an idea for electrical current. If something resists the flow of current, we say that it has a high resistance. So resistance is essentially providing a non-conservative force on the charges. It's dissipating the energy. It's turning the kinetic energy of the moving charges into heat and heating up the resistor. In the case of an electric light bulb, specifically an incandescent light bulb, it's heating up the filament, which is causing it to glow. We quantify resistance in terms of the voltage it takes to maintain a current. So volts per amp. 